be it from you. You're not going to die. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Now what you need to do is not look at people. I'm not telling you to look at people and say, get behind me, Satan. I'm telling you to get your eyes off of personalities and get your eyes on the real enemy. And the real enemy is the devil. And here's the good news. You already have power and authority over the devil. Amen? Amen. So we're tired of people. We're tired of problems. We're tired of this. We're tired of that. But what we need to do is realize that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's where we fight. And I am, frankly, sick and tired of the devil. I'm sick of our kids getting messed up. I'm sick of people getting sick. I'm sick of drama and division and nonsense. Obviously, why haven't you set people straight? Because the people are the problem. The devil is the problem. Now, granted, sometimes I need to tell people, look, grow up, straighten up, stop letting the devil, the devil uses you right now. You go with the Holy Ghost if you let the devil use you, you know? But uh, for the most part, I can spend a lot less time in my office counseling people than we all spend more time on our knees talking to Jesus. And then when we get up out of that prayer meeting, and I'm not talking about prayer. I went over before the service. Uh, the young people I happen to know had gone over to the youth sanctuary, and they were praying. And buddy, I went in there, and man, the devil wasn't hanging out in there. They were calling down heaven in there. And so... I'm not talking about little prayer meetings where you kneel down and just say, God, if you could see it in your heart, just get me through one more little moment here, one more little day here. This Lord just enough to squeak by. I, I don't mean that kind of prayer meeting. I mean the kind of prayer meeting where you come in before the throne of grace boldly. And I don't mean demanding God. I mean saying to God, God, you're my only, only hope. And God, I know that when I got the Holy Ghost, you gave me something inside of me that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And God, I know that when you gave me this Holy Ghost, you gave me Holy Ghost authority and power. And I know that you said whoever believes can cast out devils and can take dominion. You said that if I pray for the sick, they shall recover. God, you told me that. So I'm going to pray until I pray through my flesh. And then I'm talking about a prayer meeting where when you get up, you square back your shoulders and you go looking for that old devil that's been messing with your kids and messing with your marriage and messing and mess you with your church and say, devil, I'm coming after you and I will bring you down. I've got power. I've got Holy Ghost authority and you can find the devil in your life. You need to shout amen to that. You need to believe that. Glory. <laughs> Listen, you can take time to enumerate all of the things the devil's done, if you want to, that's, that's your business. But I implore you tonight as your pastor and as a mouthpiece for God in this pulpit at this moment, when you have finished telling how bad the devil is, would you please be sure to tell how, God, how good your God is? Would you please? If you got to give the devil credit, at least give God more credit. Because no matter how big the devil is, our God is bigger. So he comes to Jesus desperate with his son. But he doesn't find Jesus. He first encounters his disciples. Now I'm going to tell you, the power is not within you. Just because you're his disciple, just because you come to church. The power is in the fact that you are apostolic. You have an apostolic experience. Uh, experience. You are you are basing your life on apostolic doctrine, and you have a Pentecostal experience. You have been justified by faith. You have been sanctified by the Holy Spirit of God. And now that you've been born again, you're not what you used to be. 
I will tell you quite frankly, it does not even matter what you used to be. You might have been raised in the church, or you might have been raised by a pack of wolves somewhere out in the middle of the woods. I don't know, but I do know this. When you found Jesus, and you got baptized in his name, and you came up speaking in tongues, you doesn't matter how you were born the first time. You got born again. You might have been nobody in the other life, but in this life, you are a child of God. And in this earth, you are his ambassador. 